Tonight starts week one of the NFL. How good does that sound? Last year, I went 11-3 and three on my teaser picks against the spread. This year, I'm going to even do better. I've got the picks that are going to make you money this weekend. You'll want to stay tuned for that. How about Major League Baseball looking to expand? I've got the city that they want to go into and the former boy band star who's spearheading the effort to bring a Major League Baseball team to his hometown. Tom Brady has an NFL record that is six years old. I'm going to tell you what the record is, and I'm going to tell you why it's going to get broken this weekend. Congratulations, you found the show that helps you be smarter than your friends when it comes to sports. Let's start the show. You're tuned into the hottest sports analysis of the week with your hosts, Ron Dolbeck and Chris Roberts. And now, here's the first round. Hi to everybody out there. This is the first round. You found us on YouTube. We are here every single Monday and Thursday night talking about everything going on in the world of sports. On my left, my co-host for the last year, Chris Roberts. Chris, it, I'm excited. NFL is here. Yep. College football's half here. Major League Baseball's definitely here. And the NBA playoffs are here. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited for the NBA playoffs. Um, I'm definitely, you know, especially this game seven that's going on tomorrow. I'm definitely excited for college football. I want, I want to see what Miami's going to do. I want to see what these other teams are going to bring to the table. And yes, NFL is back. NFL is back. Right after the show, we're going to get into the NFL game. Uh, Kansas City, it's hard to say, defending Super Bowl champions at home against Houston. That's one of my monster picks of the week. And against my better judgment, trying to be a good sports fan, we have... Kansas City colors behind us tonight, which you don't know how that makes my skin crawl. I mean, I, I can't even get into the, the only thing worse than that is w- what has been bothering me this week. And before we get into everything going on in the world of sports, have, you buy stuff online, right? Yeah, I do. I have a new rule. Mm-hmm. Nothing from China. We're, we're just, we can't make it great again. We're not buying anything from China. Now, why is that? Now? Okay. So I like the, the, the retro kickback t-shirts of like Big Daddy Kane, EPMD, Run DMC. I love buying those shirts. I bought a Cypress Hill shirt about six years ago. Right. I mean, it, it, it was literally about six or seven weeks ago. So far, instead of my Cypress Hill shirt that I, I didn't even realize was from China, I have gotten a Harry Potter t-shirt, some tampons, and a Toothpick of the Month Club membership. I've gotten everything on Amazon and Alibaba except my Cypress Hill T-shirt. I'm not. If it says it's from China anymore, forget it. I'm not buying it. I'll pay more. I'll get something from good old USA, Honduras, Indonesia, anywhere. If it says China, it's not happening. Ron, save yourself some time. You stay right around the corner from the mall, man. Just go ahead and, and just. Where am I going to go to the mall to get a Cypress Hill T-shirt? Uh, let's see. In the Cypress Hill T-shirt. Um, uh huh. Oh, There's, Spencer's. Spen- yeah, Spencer's, Spencer's probably. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. And then I'll pay 26 bucks for it, but at least I'll have a Cypress Hill. Yeah, exactly. They literally sent me a, a T-shirt that, A, I didn't even know it was Harry Potter because I've never watched Harry Potter. I, I haven't. Or what's the other one? The Towers? What's, uh, Lord, I, don't, I, well, I don't know. Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Never seen yeah. Lord of the Rings. I've never done DC Comics, Marvel. I've never seen any of those. I know. I'm like so old guy. Get off my lawn. I don't even care. But... <laughs> I, I had to go ask my son, what is this T-shirt? I, I, I gave it to him. How do you get Cypress Hill and Harry Potter mixed up? I have no idea. What I do have a good idea on is what's going on in the world of sports, and let's get to that right now. The top story right now in the world of sports, besides the NFL starting, which we're going to hit big time tonight, is the NBA, my Boston Celtics, drag their feet in Game 6, can't get it done against the Toronto Raptors, forcing a Game 7 Friday night. It goes into double overtime in Game 6. The Toronto Raptors pull out their second miracle win of this series that should have been over in Game 4. It is not. We have a Game 7. I'm nervous. I'm going to need emotional support and probably financial donations, pills, alcohol, and some other things if they don't win because the Celtics should have had this wrapped up Four games ago, three games ago, this should have been finished. I'm excited for Friday night, but I'm definitely nervous. Let's talk about some fan bases that shouldn't be nervous. L.A. Lakers tonight, going they're up 2-1 against Houston. I think they close this out in, in five games. 
All, that's game four tonight. Also, yesterday, the clip show goes up 3-1 against uh, Denver with a 96-85 win in game four last night. I think they're going to close that out against Denver Friday night. Watch for that. Other NBA news. How about Billy Donovan? He goes 243 wins, 157 losses in OKC in the last five years, and they mutually part ways. I think this is management coming down in a conference that's been ridiculously talent-laden and traded away all this talent, and they're blaming him. I think he's a stand-up coach. He's won everywhere he's gone. Chris and I are going to get into if he coaches again, and is it going to be a pro or a college place? Some guys are just made for college coaching. I think he's one of them. I think he's a stand-up guy. Sp staying in OKC. How about the rumors coming out today? Chris Paul is on his way out the door. Places that he could land. I think it's Philadelphia. I think it's Miami. And I think it's the Bucks. Chris and I will get into that and talk about where it would be a good fit for Chris Paul. Major League Baseball news. The Miami Marlins put up nine runs last night against the Atlanta Braves. And still lost by 20. That's right. They still lost by 20. And this is a day after the Marlins held them to no runs and four hits. Last night, Atlanta gets it done 29-9 to in an absolute woodshed shellacking of the Miami Marlins. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even make this, this stuff up. That's just crazy. Uh, big games we're going to cover in the NFL. Houston at Kansas City. Green Bay goes on the road to Minnesota. Minnesota lay in two and a half. I'll have picks on that. How about the Cleveland Kardashians starting out, starting out new season, new head coach on the road with my Super Bowl pick, the Baltimore Ravens. That's a monster, monster game. I'm going to I have a monster pick on that game, and I'm not going to miss watching it. Week one, Bucks Saints. Saints at home. Given three and a half, I've definitely got picks on that, and I have ironclad locks when it comes to the Cowboys and my five-star millennial pick of the century. This is a guaranteed lock. If you need your rent, you're going to want to stay tuned to the show. Also, in MMA, Dustin Poirier comes out and says, if the price is right, he will fight with Tony Ferguson at UFC 254. Don't forget, next Saturday, monster uh, fight, in my opinion, Colby Covington taking on Tyrone Woodley, who absolutely needs this win to save his career. He's been on the down streak for the past 18 months. I think that's going to be a monster fight at 170 pounds. And then what Chris and I are really looking forward to, and we have bets on it on our big board up here, September 26th, my absolute destroyer pound for pound best fighter right now, Paulo Costa at 13-0, steps into the octagon against middleweight champ Israel Adesanya, who is 19-0. I've got Paul Costa in that one. Also, on the undercard of that, Dominic Reyes takes a 12-1 record up against Jan uh, Blackowitz. That's going to be a monster fight. I love Reyes in that one. And, Chris, that's everything that's going on in the world of sports. What stands out most to you about that? Well, I mean, I'm just excited for both just football in general. That's what really stands out is yeah. we have college football and we have the NFL coming back. So, I'm definitely that's, – that's it. It's oh, yeah. As soon as we're done with the show – I'm going out to my new 86-inch 4K TV that I'm excited about. And I'm going to watch, I can't, oh gosh, a really good team from last year. I can't say it. Come on. Can't, I can't you say can, it. You can say it. I can help you pronounce it. I don't want you to help me pronounce it. But a, a, a team from the Midwest is taking on a team from Texas, the Houston. I, you know, this has got to be it for Bill O'Brien, right? Yeah, this this is this is it. I mean, it. it I, I just I don't know what to say. I mean, you, you get rid of pro arguably one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's well, hit pause on that. Let's start with the NBA tomorrow night, Game Seven between Boston and Toronto. I I don't even know what to say about this. This this literally should have been over in Game Four. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. This should have been a four game sweep, at most, a disciplined team effort. Well executing team in Boston. Worst case scenario, closes this out in five games. Didn't happen. Two razor close, I'm not even ashamed to say miracle victories by Toronto. Keep them in it until game seven. I said, I'm nervous. I'm gonna need some pills. I'm gonna need some hugs. I'm gonna need a couple drinks. And if the if Boston wins, then I'm happy. 
Life goes on. If they don't, I have to get on Twitter and say, oh, well, there's always next year. You don't even, I would rather put a pencil in my ear and shove as hard as I can than to say that phrase. Well, I mean, like the old saying go, in order to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And so, you know, um, this is this is to a point where Boston has to be able to beat Toronto. And, you know, really it comes down to the mental toughness that, you know, um, that Coach Coach Nurse has has already had these boys, guys in um, Toronto already developed. So they already had a mental toughness. I mean, they had a bunch of close games last year. Yeah. I mean, you know, they had a different leader. You know, had Kawhi last year. Right. That's but a big, a big a thing. Big thing, right. But, I mean, now, I mean, you have these guys coming together as a team, you know, being down. And the fact that they're able to f- continue to fight, they just continue to show their mental toughness. I-, I think half of the story is Toronto overcoming everything. But I think the other half of the story is, like, bipolar output by the Celtics' front five. Five minutes into the fourth quarter, Kemba Walker has five points for the whole game. Kemba Walker has five points. In game five, Jalen Brown goes like one for 133 from behind the three-point line. Couldn't hit the side of a barn. They've got to get consistent play. And, you know, I actually think the two stars for them are Marcus Smart, who's consistent, and I know what I'm getting every single game, and Jason Tatum. Yeah. They've been doing this without 17 points and about eight or nine rebounds a game from, J- from uh, Hayward. They're yeah. doing it without him. So if they just show up, play good team ball, Get rid of the the turnovers that are killing them. Shoot decent, decent from three point. Th- this should be an eight or nine point victory. I mean, it really should. But then you have to also get the thing too. You have a player like like Kemba Walker, who's probably never been in a situation like this, being that he came from Charlotte, and you know yeah. this is this is his first deep run into the playoffs. So you know that but he's also, been around long enough. He's, to he's know. been he's been around, but it's it's a whole different ball game when you're you're go, you're used to going out in the first round. Or not making not it to all. The, not, or not making it to the playoffs at all. Right. So the fact that you know now you're playing playoff basketball, you have that pressure of actually getting to a championship. I mean that that in itself could weigh on you too, and that that could play on your psyche as well. Zach, one word tomorrow: Boston, Toronto, go. Boston. Okay, Chris. Boston. I, I'm going with Boston, and I know everybody's going to say you're a homer. I, I think Boston actually has a better team. I think they have a better coach. I think they play better defense. And I think they have a, a stronger team. When you look at the bench, look at all the contributors that they've had, you know, coming off the bench, whether it's Ojale, I Smart stepping up and taking, you know, uh, that now that Hayward's gone down, he's in the starting five. He comes to play every single night. He's actually the MVP for, for Boston, I think, of this series. And I, I th- it could come down to an overtime game tomorrow. I, I can't see Toronto blowing them out. I can see... Boston winning by eight or nine points. That's what should happen. But this is 2020. There's Corona. I don't get my packages from China. And we have a couple of conferences playing college football and a bunch of them that aren't. It's just crazy. But I think it's going to be a razor close game. Boston's got to get up on him and cut the life out of him. But you know Toronto's not going away. Toronto was down by 24 points the other night in game five and cut it down to 12 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, you know, it, it really what it, it boils down to is, is the coach being able to coach his guys up and being able to be an X and O guys. I mean, you could tell, like, coaches that are X and O guys who, who you know, just, hey, just get the ball to this player and let him do what he do. I mean, but as you see with Toronto's coach, with, with Nurse, I mean, this guy was the coach of the year last year, and he was the coach of the year for no reason last year. So, I mean, the fact that he's able to coach these guys up to actually ha- allow them to – but continue to play team ball and continue mm-hmm. to work to bring themselves and put themselves back into position to actually win the game. That just goes to show you that it's, it's not, not only the players stepping up, but the coaches as well. Oh, there's no no quit when it comes to Toronto. Absolutely no quit. Wasn't Brad Stevens named coach of the year this year? I don't know. Zach, check that on your phone, man. I, th- I think he was named coach of the year this year. Keep it in the NBA. Lakers go up 2-1 uh, two nights ago uh, against Houston. They play again tonight. I think the series is over. I, I think that the biggest liability for any team in the playoffs is Russell Westbrook. I mean, he has played so absolutely bad, and he is so bipolar that you cannot rely on him. And I keep going to the same well over and over when it comes to the NBA playoffs. I keep saying, hey, I need guys that I can count on. I need the 20 and 10 guys with four or five assists. I, I need to know what I'm getting. And with Ru- Ru- Russell Westbrook, it's so bipolar. It's crazy. I never know what I'm getting. He's either on 
or he's clanking it and building a brick house. I can't trust him. I think he's the liability when it comes to Houston because they play really good defense. They've, they've had periods, significant periods, where they've shut the Lakers down. They were down by 27 in the second quarter of the last game. They got it all the way down in the third quarter to a five-point lead. That's a 32-point swing and outscored the Lakers 41-14 to in the third quarter. So their three-point shooting is awesome. Their defense is really, really good. And then you bring Russell Westbrook in, and I'm like, why are you doing this? But I Am mean, I out of my mind? I mean, no, you're not out of your mind. And to me, it, it makes you actually question the trade for, for Chris Paul for, for, for Russell Westbrook. I mean, I understand you're saying there's probably tenses with, with uh, James Harden and, and Chris Paul. But, contract. But you ha- also con- have to— That's a contract thing. But you still you have, to, you have to understand, like, with Chris Paul, I mean, he's going to give you hard nose intensity. Yep. He's, he's going he's gonna to play all four quarters— He's not going to be that person. Who's going and to how look good did he look in his series? And he looked great in his yeah. series. I mean, he plays. He leaves it all on the court. I mean, he plays with his heart on his sleeve. I mean, and that's that's what you get for Chris Paul. But is that series over? Uh, that series, yeah, yeah I, I think so. Once I think once the Lakers found out, made that adjustment from the um, the from uh, the first game when they play actually played small ball to actually beat the Lakers, I think the Lakers made the proper adjustments, and I believe this game this series is over now. You know who really showed me something, and I wasn't expect. It's like a back in the back of my mind kind of guy is Chris Middleton from the Bucks. I mean, that guy in the last game just went absolutely berserk, and I was like, "How am I not watching this guy all year?" Well, I mean, the thing Did you is, see him step up in that game. I mean, yes, Chris Middleton, but he has that ability to do that. But so much of the emphasis is focused on Giannis, mm-hmm. and this, this again, this yeah. is when Chris Middleton himself in in that game, he in those game, situations with Giannis, this is when he has to step up to the plate because you know sometimes mm-hmm. you know you're. Your star player, he can't take it all by himself. Giannis has got to be gone. He's yeah, not going to stay. Gone. They're going to. I think they're going to offer him a super max contract. But I think last year you go up 2-0 on Toronto, then you lose four in a row, and then this year the wheels absolutely came off. They were getting run out of the gym before he got his injury in game one and two. So, a he is not he is not in my MVP conversation anymore next year. N- can't happen. MVPs pick up their team and have a killer instinct to get past games like this. A series like this against Miami should have been a tough series that they pulled out in six or seven. If you're the MVP of the league, and it's just not happening. And then we saw the exact same thing happen last year against Toronto. I'm starting to question Giannis. Clips go up 3-1 against Denver two nights ago. Tonight, I think it's a closeout game for uh, for them on Friday. I'm sorry, they're going to close out on Friday, I think. So you've got the Lakers and Clippers closing out those two series, and you've got Boston taking on Miami? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, that's what that's what I've got going on. Major League Baseball news. How about NSYNC member Justin Timberlake joining the investment group, pushing to land a franchise in his hometown of Nashville? Guess who else is in this deal? Who else? Dave Dombrowski. Oh, really? Former GM of the Detroit, Ly- uh, Detroit Tigers. Mm-hmm. Former GM of the Boston Red Sox, and they're trying to put together a, a package to bring. It's called the Music City Group, and they're trying to bring Major League Baseball to Nashville. Which I think uh, last year the draft in Nashville was awesome. Yeah, and the Predators are supported really well by Nashville. I think bringing a team there would be great. And you know who else is from Nashville? Baseball related, Mookie mm-hmm. Betts. Okay. So I I think it would be a home run. Now here's the question I have for you about this. Not want to spend too much time on it. Do they start a new franchise there? Uh, baseball? Oh. Or do they bring somebody else in? Because look, let's look at Miami last year. They averaged 10,030 people at every game. 10,000 in Miami. I know Jeter took over there. He wants to rebuild it. I don't see it happening. Another team, if I was going to move a franchise, I'd be looking at Tampa. They averaged, averaged 14,000. They were going to play in Montreal this year. While their new stadium in Ybor City was being built, then the funding and the and the public, you know, the funding fell through. The public was mad about it. They didn't want to pay for it. They don't get a new stadium. They were literally looking at playing instead of in Tampa Bay in that carnival of a mausoleum that they have up in Montreal. So, do they move a team there, or do we start a new team and just have them support it from day one? Because Las Vegas wants a team too. Um, I can I can actually see them bringing a team in, but I think 
um, really with that with the the team and uh, the the group that they have in Nashville, I think they actually could actually put a team there, fill the team there. To be honest with you, build from ground zero. Build from ground zero, yeah. That's what I think they should do. But then you know we're getting more teams in. We're, here's my concern: Major League Baseball can't grab the millennials, and and their their viewer base is going down. The amount of time people are watching is going down. The revenue from commercials is going down. The shared revenue from the TV contracts is going down. And now you're going to expand the league. Yeah. Figure out how to stop the, the the dam from all the little holes in it first, and then talk about building another dam. You know, Zach, what were you thinking? Well, I was just going to say, if they start a new team from the ground up, wouldn't they have to add another team in each division as well to keep it balanced? I don't know. Well, I all the te- all the divisions aren't balanced. There's like they're in, is in there the a West. Different number of teams in yeah. each yeah. division. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I really I wouldn't even worry about. That's the least of the things I'd be worrying okay. about. I I'm way more concerned whether Nashville can financially support a major league baseball team. Yeah. And if you're not able to to fix the problems in places like Seattle and Texas, Miami especially, you built this brand new stadium. You get nine thousand people going to a game. I mean, you can't have that. The last thing you want to do. It, you got to do your research. You don't want to start a brand new team there with a brand new name and you're not moving to another franchise and then you get 30,000 people dressed up as empty seats showing up to your opening game. It can't happen. Let's go to the NFL. The big news is NFL is back tonight. Kansas City, the Super Bowl champions, are hosting the Houston Texans. This is a monster game. I am so ready for it. As soon as we're done with the show, we're going to check out the game. How does Houston, we talked about it at the top of the show, lose DeAndre Hopkins. They bring in Brandon Cook, who's probably not going to play today. He's got a hamstring injury, so he'll be out. And then what they get is 28-year-old running back David Johnson from Arizona, who had 343 yards, two touchdowns, and went for 3.7 yards a carry last year. I don't think that's the answer. I've got so many questions, and I was singing this last year about Bill O'Brien. They actually gave him the head coach slash GM position two years ago. I don't think it's worked out. I'm looking for a huge, huge game from Kansas City, which is easy to say, but I'm looking at what's on paper. Yeah, I'm looking what's on looking what's on paper too. I mean, you bring in uh, Braden Cooks, who, who had like uh, he had like 40, 40, 42, 47 receptions last year, and mm-hmm. only had like barely 600 yards. Right. And so, and then on top of that, your second best receiver you had was. Will Fuller, and we we know this right. guy is lightning fast down the field, but his availability is always up in the air. I'm not I, super sold on Brandon Cooks. He, I mean, why did New Orleans let him go? Why did Bill Belichick well, let I'm, him go? Why did the Rams I'm, let him go? I mean, everywhere I hear about, it's like, this guy's super talented. We picked him up. Yeah, but so have 15 other teams. Why does everybody keep letting him go if he's a superstar? I'm, Chicago never let go of, go of Michael Jordan. There was a reason. Well, I mean, the thing with Brandon Cooks is that he has had some great years. I mean, there have been... Uh, a few years ago, back with the LA Rams, where he had over a thousand yards receiving. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the potential is there. I mean, it's the consistency has to be there as well. Yeah. So you know, I think with him being with uh, Deshaun Watson and him now actually probably being the number one, I think you'll see his numbers actually go up this year. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, just looking at the information from from you know a couple of years prior, you know, prior to injuries and prior to going to the LA Rams, who offensive line decided to just disappear oh yeah I mean, last year so, so you know i mean that that also played a role into his numbers last year as well let's go to the other side of the fence and talk about the chiefs defending super bowl champions you want to talk about the rich getting richer i mean i'm not even going to go down the list of all the lethal talent that they have on the offensive side of the ball but they got their defense fixed last year finishing number nine overall in defense in the nfl and then to make it even worse for everybody that has to face them including my patriots this year they go into the draft and pick up LSU rookie running back Clyde Edwards uh, Hilaire, 5'8", runs like a bowling ball, weighs about 210 pounds, doesn't fumble, and it's just like it's just they're just building the foundation of the dynasty here, and it's just rich getting richer. There's I, I can't ever remember so much talent on one side of the ball in the NFL. Like I'd have to go back to like. The early 80s of the Chargers. I'd have to go back to best show on turf with um, St. Louis Rams. Um, maybe, you know, when Warren Moon was with the Houston Oilers and they had, who was, it, um, who was that wide receiver they had there? Oh, gosh. You, I mean, they had like five, or, four or oh, five guys yeah. that were just like lights out. Right. I, I don't know. They're just so stacked. 
they're they're, they're given nine and a half points. I'm ta- taking the Chiefs on a teaser. Give the three and a half points. It could still be close, but I think it's going to get out of hand. I'm taking the Chiefs on a teaser minus three and a half tonight in their home opener. So yeah, I mean, I, I take the points as well. But what what I love about this game is you have two actually. Uh, two of the best uh, quarterbacks, probably young quarterbacks in the game right now, oh, playing yeah. against each other. I mean, really, I mean, these guys are really so good that they actually set NFL records in the same game. You had Deshaun Watson throw for 300 yards, no interceptions, and still lose the game and lose the playoff games. That's never been happened ever happened before. Wow. Then you had uh, you had Patrick Mahomes, same game, go for, throw for over 300 yards, five touchdowns, and rush for 50 yards. In the, in the playoff games. That has never happened before. So the fact that you have that type of rivalry going on with these two guys, it kind of takes you back to uh, more of um, Montana and Elway back in the day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is something that you should look for in the, for, in, in K- the future. Kansas City's given nine and a half points tonight at home. Who you got? Uh, I'm, I'm taking Kansas City. Kansas City minus the nine and a half? Minus the nine and a half, yes. Okay, so I've got them all over my board. Um, I've got them, you know, straight up parlayed, just straight up to win right. at minus 430. And then I've teased them down to three and a half points. So yeah. that's I've got uh, all kinds of parlays with them. Let's go to another super intriguing matchup this week. Green Bay goes on the road to start their season at Minnesota. Minnesota's laying two and a half. It's the one o'clock game on Fox uh, I'm taking Green Bay on a teaser on this one and getting eight and a half. What's funny? Yeah, uh, because I'm thinking about the one o'clock game with Kirk uh, Cousins. Kirk Cousins at one o'clock <laughs> wins 86 percent of the time. That's a real stat. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's going to change this year, but Kirk Cousins when he starts at one o'clock, he's won 86 percent. Oh, you know what? I, I went, I'm going with carrot juice, apple cider, and orange juice tonight. Really? You're going healthy tonight, man. Yeah, I'm on a he- I'm on a health kick. I'm like, ah. I don't know. Let's get back to sports. I'm taking Green Bay. This is one of my teasers. I'm getting Green Bay plus eight and a half. I love, love, love this pick. Both teams last year in overall defense in 2019 were in the top 10. I think that the running back position is solidified in Green Bay. I love Aaron Jones. He went for over 1,000 yards last year, 16 touchdowns, almost five yards a carry. I think that's those are monster stats. Minnesota loses Stephon Diggs. Thielen, Johnson, and rookie uh, LSU wide receiver Justin Jefferson, that doesn't fit the bill for me. I think that the Packers defense is going to keep it close, and if you're giving me eight and a half, and you're giving me the offense that that they've got, and as uh, I think a suspect wide receiving core for Minnesota, even though it's a road game, I'll take Aaron Rodgers all day long, and the eight and a half. Yeah, I really, I, I think this, this game really boils down to the running backs in the offensive line play, and as well as um, Aaron Aaron Rodgers being able to take care of the, take advantage of this young secondary um, for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, I mean, last year you look at the the one game that Davin Cook did play. He rushed for over 154 yards. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, for 20 carries, basically averaging seven yards a carry. Then you had uh, you had you know Jones from from um, from Green Bay last year. He right, actually, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, yes, he rushed for over 270 yards in the two games he did play and three touchdowns, not to mention the passing yards. He had over 40 yards receiving yards as well. So I think those running backs are really going to be the key to winning this game and the offensive line play. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game, and uh, I'm going to take Green Bay plus the eight and a half. Let's take a quick break here and thank all of our new subscribers. We're over 700 right now. We want to thank everybody that's subscribed. You can be a part of the show here or follow us on Twitter at the first round with the number one or get your comments and questions in here to the first round at the first round RD at gmail.com. We get those on the, at least once a week on one of our shows, Monday and Friday. Hit the notification button so you'll be reminded every Monday, Monday and Thursday when we do have shows. Tell your friends about the first round. Help grow us to epic proportions. And if you've missed any part of the show, check up our archive videos right here on YouTube. Having said that, let's get back to the NFL huge game The Cleveland Kardashians are going on the road to open up their season with new head coach Kevin Stefanski, and they're going to my Super Bowl pick for 2020, the Baltimore Ravens, who I think are completely stacked. But here's the thing that I've said for two years now about Cleveland. 
You have all the talent in the world. We could talk about OBJ, head case. We could talk about your quarterback, head case. We could talk about Nick Chubb, one of the best running backs in the NFL. We could talk about Landry. We could talk about uh, Tariq Hill. Or wait, no, No, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt just signed a new deal there. All of this offensive power and on the defensive side, I think they have a good secondary, but you've got Miles Garrett on the defensive line who's the most penalized player last year before he got kicked out. He's also a bit of a head case. And if they can just get the egos and the drama under control, I've got it up on the big board with Joe and Zach that they're going to be better than Pittsburgh in this division this year. But that's a big if. If you can get all these guys, if Baker Mayfield gets the ego under control, stop wearing leopard thongs, sitting on Rolls Royces with Tigers, making commercials. I mean, that guy started turning into Shaq and Peyton Manning with everything he endorsed. Focus on football. If you guys just focus on football, you have so much talent there, especially Nick Chubb. I think he's one of the top three best running backs in the NFL. I've got them to finish second in their division this year, but I've got them to finish second in this game. Baltimore's laying seven and a half. You know, I, I think this, this game is going to be closer than that. I, I really do. I th- mm-hmm. think uh, with this game right here, look, in order for them, in order for Baltimore to actually get to seven points, get to seven points as you stated, Lamar Jackson has to be able to take care, take advantage of their uh, linebacker problems because Cleveland has, you know, a shortage of depth in the linebackers. If he's able to take care of that, I mean, they can actually blow this game wide open, but Again, that's a big but. But I, I think on paper wise, I mean, this team, as you said, has all the talent in in the world. Right. I mean, they they have they have a decent secondary. They have a great great defensive line. So I think they can uh, give some pressures on Lamar. And if he's not careful, I mean, Cleveland could actually pull this game out. I, I think it could be close. Browns last year twentieth in defense overall in the NFL. Ravens third lockdown defense. Run-based offense. I think Baltimore runs the runs the ball to open up the pass. Lamar does not have to go for 399 yards and 43 completions. He, even though he's a superstar, even though he's the current MVP, all he has to do is manage the offense. What I'm really looking forward to is Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins in the same backfield. That to me, how did J.K. Dobbins go in the second round, 56th pick overall? 55 other picks, other guys were better than J.K. Dobbins? But you have to understand, too, Ryan. He I wasn't mean, even the first running back uh, taken. You have to understand. I mean, Clyde, Clyde uh, Edwards Hilaire was, I mean, in the, you know, going to Kansas City. Right. But, you know, but I mean. Swift was taken before him. Yeah. I, I think Dobbins was one of the top guys. I mean, to me, yes, he was. Top running backs coming out of last year. Yes, he was. I mean, to me, I think he had the best vision out of all the running backs other than Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And Hilaire's. speed. And, yeah, and speed. And power. He right. doesn't fumble. I mean, you and I watched – uh, Ohio State last year, him and Master T just, you know, they were both, it was like, who wants 150 yards today? Just raise your hand. Yeah. And they were, that was going up against good defenses. You know, Wisconsin was a good defense last year. For being as bipolar as they were, Michigan had a good defense last year. I think that's the steal pick for that. That was such a great pick for them at 56. I look, I, I'm taking Baltimore on this straight up, just on a money line bet, I think they're going to win the game. But you know what? If I was going to tease this, I'd tease it the other way. I'd take 13 and a half with the Browns. Yeah, I mean, I'd I take, them, take them straight up. I mean, they're going to win the game. But, I mean, this Cleveland team is very, very talented. And if this coach is as is, is intense and, and as is, um, disciplined as they say he is, I think that he have them going Kevin in the right Stefanski? direction. Kevin Stefanski? Yes. Yeah, 14 years formerly with Minnesota. Worked his way up the coaching ranks. Finishes the off- offensive coordinator there. But I think it's discipline. You don't have to fix the offense. You have to sharpen up the discipline on the offense. And then Cleveland could be awesome. Let's go to the game that I think is causing the most stir outside the home opener or the season opener, uh, Kansas City and Houston tonight, which would be the Bucks going on the road to New Orleans, getting three and a half points. It's a 430 start. It's the national game for Fox this week. I think it's the biggest game on the board. I love the Saints in this game. Huge. I love this game. I'm taking the Saints on a teaser, getting two and a half points. Last year, I've talked about this the last couple weeks. I think Tampa Bay has an absolutely carnival of insanity defense. I don't trust them. There's guys on ESPN talking about they have a lockdown defense. I'm like, they were ranked worse than 25th. 
They were 30th in the NFL in overall defense. Where are you seeing lockdown defense? I don't see it. What I do see is the, the defense of the Saints, 13th best overall, and they have weapons all over the place. I still believe in Drew Brees. I love Alvin Kamara. Michael Thomas is one of the top five receivers in the league. Then they went out and picked up Emmanuel Sanders at wide receiver who can stretch the field. And on top of that, they have a dual threat guy that can li line up at tight end, wide receiver, running back, Taysom Hill. And you've got one of the best head coaches in Sean Payton in the NFL. I love this pick so much. Saints on a teaser, getting two and a half at home against the Bucks. Well, I, I, I see it. I see it. Uh, see it a different way. I, I, I actually like what the books did by going and picking up um, uh, Leonard Fournette from 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 Jacksonville. Right. And I, I think what this does with um, with uh, Tampa Bay is it allows them to play uh, basically c control the clock. I mean, you have now you have a big back that can actually run the ball. Right. But what was my biggest concern with Tampa Bay what, in the off season? Well, you're talking about the offensive line. The offensive line. They gave up over 40 sacks last year with a guy who was mobile. Now you've got a guy that's drilled and, and bolted to the center of the earth. Tom's not going anywhere. So they're going to have to have a lot of quick passes. And if, if that offensive line is sketchy like last year, Leonard, you could put Leonard Fournette back there. You could put Godzilla back there. You could put a Velociraptor back there. Yeah, they're I, not going anywhere if that offensive line doesn't get any better. But at the same time, I mean, you still had James Winston throw for over five thousand yards last year. So I mean, the offensive line passing. He passed. He passed. He still. Yeah. He, he passed for over five thousand yards with that running bad, for his life with, and he, with with that bad offensive line. So right? again, with having Leonard Fournette there, I think they are able to play control uh, control the clock and actually limit Drew Brees being on the on the field. So I believe that's going to play a major role in this game this this week. Yeah, and their offensive line absolutely has right. to show up to keep this close. Here's this, a stat that I found out doing some research over the weekend. Uh, Brady, this is amazing. This is the first time since week two in 2015, mm -hmm. 74 straight game, regular season games that Tom Brady has taken the field and been favored. Just think about that. The Patriots were favored in every single regular season game for five years when Tom Brady was the starter. I think that is a monster stat. That statistic is going to end. That streak is going to end this week because they're a three and a half point dog. I don't see that line swinging three and a half points in four days. I'm taking the teaser, though. I love, love, love New Orleans. Who's your pick in this one? Um, I take New Orleans in the game, but I think it's going to be closer than... Then things will be closer than what, what the Lions says. I actually think it could get out of hand because I don't know how much of the playbook that uh, Tom Brady has gotten over the offseason. I don't think that you're going to get Gronk, superstar Gronk from five years ago. I think you're going to get Gronk who's, who's lost weight, has had openly public issues working out in the Florida heat, and you've got a second-year offensive coordinator in um, Byron Lefwich who had a really bad situation with a young – Jameis Winston last year. Now he's got a veteran in there who's got to learn the whole book. Everything to me swings towards New Orleans. Let's go rapid fire with the rest of the big games on the board. Cowboys go on the road to the Rams, giving three and a half. I'm laying the three and a half all day. I love the Cowboys in this game to win. Yeah, I'm going with the Cowboys as well. Okay. Uh, Seattle at Atlanta. Atlanta getting two and a half points. I teased that up. I'm going to take Atlanta plus the eight and a half at home against Seattle, even though I love Russell Wilson. Yeah, I take um, I take um, I take Atlanta. Atlanta with the points as well. Okay, uh, Jets and Bills. Bills are laying six and a half. I'm laying the six and a half with the Bills. They made the playoffs last year. I think they're going in the right direction. I think Josh Allen has another year under his belt to kind of get that maturity complex. So you need to get leading, being a leader in the NFL. And I think their defense is great. I think they have a top five defense. Bills lay the six and a half. Against the Jets. Yeah, I'm taking the Bills, and I also like the addition of Stephon Diggs to, to actually help him out as well. Yeah. Um, Bears named Mitchell Trubisky as their starter. I know. I, I'm. I'm <laughs> I don't, they go on the road to start their season at the Matt Patricia Lions of Detroit, getting three points. I'm actually taking the Bears plus the three on the road. <laughs> The Bears. How are they going to score three points, right? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Who you got? Yeah, I mean, 
I go. I guess the Bears with the plus the three. You're gonna take the Bears plus the three. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering if they can just score a touchdown. I mean, they're gonna cover. I mean, the, the the guy only averaged three yards a pass last year. Like, why? I know. I know. All the analytics are bad. But I'm, <laughs> sometimes the NFL, you, you know, you, the the freakiest stuff happens. I'm taking the Bears. I'm taking the three. Miami goes on the road for the first time since I can ever remember to Gillette. Outside of December, take on the Pats. Pats are given six and a half. This is one of my teaser specials. I'm taking Miami plus 12 and a half. Miami Ooh. plus 12 and a half. I think Flores has them playing good. They beat them in a must game, must win game at Gillette at the end of last season. I think Cam is good, but not great. I'm taking the Fish plus the 12 and a half on the road. This is, this is a tough one. Um, I... I... I'll take Miami because I, I just don't think Kim has that playbook un- under control just yet. Uh-huh. And also, I mean, the lack of weapons, too, I mean, and, and for the Patriots as right. well. Right, and they lost eight, eight guys that yeah. opted out. Most of those were defensive, plus they lost Kyle Van Oy. Mm-hmm. Dante Hightower's not playing. Their linebacking core, it looks like Swiss cheese. And I'm saying that about my own team. Uh, absolute who cares game. Eagles open up their season at Washington. Washington's totally dysfunctional. I think the Eagles got their, uh, I, I, I think they're, well, Jalen Rager, their rookie, I think is out for three to five weeks, but I still think their, their wide receiver core is good. I believe in Carson Wentz. If he could stay healthy, I'm laying the five with the Eagles. Who do you got? Yeah, I, I got the Eagles. I mean, just, just, I don't know what to say about Washington, but you know, I mean, I'm just, just everybody just continue to have pray for Ron Rivera. You know, he went out with his situations, so, right? So, you know, I and think, I, yeah. Here's the thing with with Washington. I don't believe in Dwayne Haskins yet. Until no. he shows me one game where he can do it, and he hasn't done it, I'm not going to believe it. That's where yeah. I'm at with him. Last game, this is my monster five star millennial lock, lock, lock of the week. Colts go on the road to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The only thing the Jaguars have going for them is is uh, Minshew. Gardner Minshew, the quarterback. The Colts are laying eight points. I love this game. I absolutely love it. I love their Colts offensive line. I love that Rivers came in there. They way overpaid. $25 million for one year is way too much. I love their wide receiving core. I think their, their running game is going to be C-plus to B-minus. I think they run it up on the Jag. They're only given eight points. This is my five-star millennial pick of the century. Colts on the road, minus eight. Yeah, I'm going with the Colts in that game too. I mean, it seemed like Jacksonville took a page out of the Miami Marlins page and and just wanted to just blow everything up and get rid of everybody. And I mean, to yep. me, they they don't have anybody there. I mean, no, right, they've blown up their yeah. defensive line. They did everything. Calais, they let go. Uh, they let Ramsey go. They let yeah. Fournette go. They yeah. fired uh, you know half the execs yeah. upstairs. Yeah. Uh, they're so dysfunctional. I don't even know how they're going to score. They probably will. But I love the Colts in this one minus yeah. eight. Yeah, that, yeah. Of course, this will be the game you turn on halfway through, and it's like twenty-four to three. Colts are losing. Yeah, yeah, pretty I, much. It, it just absolutely pissed me off. Hey, let's go college football. I'm not calling this week one or two, even though when you look, it says week two. two right. This is like week point five. It's not right. even week one because not everybody's playing. Let's hit some of the big games. I'll get. Right. I'll, I'll throw out a couple of them that I really like. My monster college pick of the week: Clemson goes on the road to Wake Forest. They're giving 32 points. I love laying the 32. I think they're going to destroy and run it up. Like you said, three-headed monster wide receiver, Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence. I think they get it done. I think the 32 points is absolutely nothing. They'll put 32 points up in the first five minutes of the game. Wake Forest has no idea what this is about to hit them. I'm taking Clemson minus the 32. UAB opens up tonight at Miami. Miami laying 14 points. I think this is a big acid test for Manny Diaz. I know it's UAB, but you got to show me something. Right. Last year, you weren't ready for my uh, the the season college football season opener against Florida. You had all kinds of penalties, mismanagement of time. I, it was a, an absolute crap show the whole game, and the rest of the season pretty much went the same way. Manny Diaz has to show me the alumni and the president at, uh, at University of Miami something. I think they get it done against UAB, and then my other monster pick is Appalachian State at home, giving 17 over Charlotte. I'll lay the 17 points all day long and twice on Sunday. Those are my big college picks of the week. Yeah, I mean, I actually like um, that. My actually, you know what? I actually like Miami this year. I mean, simply for this, the, the one reason that they got rid of. Dan Enos last year, I mean, who was was horrible as offensive coordinator for Miami last year. Uh, when you when you have an offensive coordinator that put the blame on the 
on the players instead of taking responsibility for the, yeah. for the play calling. I, I have a problem with that. Right. So the fact that they actually got rid of him and they actually brought in the offensive coordinator from SMU. Mm-hmm. So that means Miami's going to put up points this year. I hope and, they do. And they're, they're going to run fast. And then the fact that you have a red red shirt quarterback, uh, De'Ara King from Houston, mm-hmm. who's a dual threat guy who yep. can actually sling the ball across the field. Freshman? He, no, no, he's a red shirt. I think he's a junior. Junior, junior, senior, senior, junior, senior. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the fact that you have somebody like that who can sling the ball across the field and move and run, yep. I think this is going to make Miami a dangerous team in the ACC yep. this year. Who's your big picks this week in college football? Uh, this this week, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to take Miami Miami with the with the 12. I take Florida State with the the 12 over Georgia Tech, and I'm going to take Clemson with the 32. Yeah, you're laying the 32, 32 and you're laying the 12. With, I, I think Florida State gets a win. Who are they playing? Florida Georgia State. Tech. Yeah, they're playing Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was absolutely one of the most dysfunctional programs last year. I know first year head coach. I know they're they're not running the T wing running back thing. I, you know they're trying to actually run a pro style offense. Right. But I I mean and again until you show me you're not dysfunctional you're dysfunctional. How right. about Army last week doing it to Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders putting up 42 points to nothing and blitzing them. One of four passing for Army. How do you how do you blitz a team 42 to nothing and you only one pass completed out of four attempts. And then they ran it. See, you know what's happening. Well, 62 rushes for over 340 yards, five touchdowns. You know we're rushing. Uh, yeah. And you still can't, you, you can't stop it. Until you stop it. I know, I'm but didn't they, running. Army, didn't they look good last week? Yeah. Again, until you stop it, I'm going to keep on running. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're taking on UL Monroe this week. Yeah. Uh, I look for them to get a victory there. Also at home, you don't walk into Mitchkey Stadium on the, the Hudson and just steal a win from Army anymore. Right. I think they're going to be a good team this year. Chris, what else is going on in the world of sports, buddy? Oh, uh, What's going on? We had uh, we had an actual pioneer for the NCAA that passed um, earlier this week. We had Tom uh, Jerstedt, who Jerstedt, who was actually one of the um, architects of the um, the Final four for for March Madness. Um, you know, basically he started out as a quarterback at Oregon from 60, 64 to sixty six. He was a qu- starting quarterback, mm-hmm. but you know he's he's worked his way in you know through the NCAA and has been you know again one of the pioneers of the of the March Madness. And also my last story is Colin Kaepernick has made it back to the NFL, baby. Colin Kaepernick is back in Madden. Um, and, you know, that, that actually sparked a lot of controversy this week as his Madden rating was actually higher than Cam Newton's. You know, I mean, you had Cam Newton at a 76. Colin Kaepernick, who hadn't played in like three or four years, is, is ranked as an 80. Yeah. That, that sparks a lot of controversy, especially in Madden ratings. These players yeah. actually take it serious. Ratings are super big, <laughs> important things. I mean, your life's on the line with the rigs. Zach, what would you say before the show? Like, he's not even on an NFL team. And What, did, what was that? I don't remember what you said. Yeah, I said it's funny the fact that he's on Madden before he's back on the NFL team. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of insane. That is kind of insane. I'll tell you something else that is insane. That music can mean only one thing. It's time to thank our support staff. We're missing Joe today. He will be back with us on Monday. So we're looking forward to that. Joe, we miss you out there. The man on the board, Zach, doing an awesome job as he always does. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The man on my left, my co-host, Chris Roberts, El Presidente Chet Forty for all of us here at the first round. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now. Hit the notification button. You'll be notified by YouTube every single Monday and Thursday night when we put out great entertaining sports knowledge. We will be right back here. Today's Thursday. We'll be back on Monday talking about everything going on in the world of sports. Until then, take care of yourselves, everybody.